My, my biggest struggle was radio and distribution. We still hadn't worked the King Fountain Radio this very day, man, because they keep switching program directors and music directors and everybody want to get paid. So they getting in the game and try to hustle. I took paperwork with me. I said, yo, matter of fact, I said, yo, look at the billboard. Drum is number five on the billboard without no Atlanta play. What are y'all going to do about that? They said, uh, we'll take a listen to it. See, they didn't know. So I did my research. I went to the club before I went to the radio. Song come on, the crowd just loses, start fighting, getting rowdy, stomping, left, right, left, chanting. I was like, look at this, they about to start a war in this club over this boy's song. Play the song. Majors is about numbers, man. They don't, they don't care if the crowd go crazy in the club. They want to see if that crowd going to buy it. So we couldn't show them that, oh, look at the club, they're going crazy. They say, ah, they probably know them. They homeboys, they go to school together. So I said, right, cool. <laughs> I was like, cool, we're going to do it like this. We're going to put it out. We put it out. It went number five. My phone ringing out the hook. Uh, uh, Universal, Atlantic, Def Jam, Capital, Priority. Y'all was calling and saying, yo, Rock, what you going to do with the drummer? I said, shoot, I want to make money. What you want to do with making money? So all of them was sending proposals to my attorney, man, and we picked the best deal, and the best deal was, was Atlantic. You be better off doing the shit independent. Cause the game's so fucked up with these majors, man. It's like they don't want, they don't know how to market you. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how to put your music in the right areas. Label people, with all due respect, are in their offices most of the time. They don't really interact with the general public and the consumer. So they're out of touch so often. It's like once you make a build up your name, then then motherfuckers, same motherfuckers will turn you down gonna come back and turn back around. That shit, that shit, it's all about brand naming. Like this, like, in like today's nice. game, you're not just, you're not coming out of nowhere. For real, for real, like it, it's, it's too hard. Like artists aren't gonna just get on, get a deal, and niggas don't hurt up. Everybody, you need to be hot in your streets, you need to be hot in your hood, you need to be hot on the mixtapes, you know, or else you, you're not really getting no deal, you're not getting no major deal. Or if you do, and you come out, people gonna look at you like, where did you come from? You know what I mean? The days of demos is done. The days of demos is done. Stay independent, and when you do step to these majors, know they, they're about the money. They're not about you or your well-being. Don't let them fool you. We were unsigned, hyping the source. We got the cover of rap pages. I'm talking about this all before we were signed. And we got signed to a label out of New York called Penalty Records. They signed us, but didn't know what to do with us because we were street, but then we were educated. We were educated, but we were spiritual. So they didn't know what to do. They couldn't just throw us in one little category. So the motherfuckers put us on the shelf for three motherfucking years. I moved up to New York with $300 and a pistol. Told the motherfuckers I was gonna sit there until these motherfuckers put my record out. Time I checked, I was the man on these streets. They call me Residue, I leap, blow on these beats. Got diarrhea flow, man, I shit on niggas. Even when I'm constipated, I still shit on niggas. Let's get it. Got some super friends in the Alpha Mega, what's happening, nigga? Let's get it, nigga. Boys in the hood, USDA, CT. Let's get it, man. Jeezy just real, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I've been knowing Jeezy for a while through his manager and everything, and you know, Jeezy, you know, would come to the crib and I would make their show CDs and everything, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's another person, like, I just. You know, I seen them on this grind, you know what I'm saying? And what they did with that mixtape, like, they created a movement. Me and Jeezy, man, we been doing this shit since ever since I did drama. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing I can say about him and his camp is for him to still be doing what he doing and he hot now, you know what I'm saying? He done already proved to everybody that he the shit. Now, you from the ATL, this Oh, <laughs> 
That's real talk, nigga. I do this for niggas like you, nigga. Coach, let's get it. I can't wait till we shoot the video. Tell Gucci I'll be spending the time. Look, lying shit like that. Why don't we lock it all that shit? Then you tell me go on my telephone that. Don't you tell the Jesus. You can't fuck with my dog. Sean, why the car you Kiwi? Okay, Kiwi. They don't like this. Nah, nah. Bumping up all night balling. You know what I'm saying? Flat fam. Mm -hmm. Taste the man. I can not explain it. Niggas hate Dobby, but I don't entertain it. Lambo's piped up, chillin' in the script club. Diamond zip my chain, look like little bit of light bulb. Well, they gave me the beat of when I heard the music. I already heard, I just came straight with the hook. Instantly. I like, what this song right here sound like a jewelry song. I'm gonna make this about ice. I said, When I came with the hook, I wrote the hook or whatever, but I couldn't sing. So when I went to Patchwork, I just so happened to go to Patchwork and see young Jesus or whatever. He called me up now. So when I get down, like, man, I got, a, uh, I got a beat. I got my producer with me. Check it out. We had about four or five beats. So he, he wanted to do like a, a more grimy beat. But I was telling him, man, this this be a more commercial song, more easier for the radio or whatever. So finally, he he uh he like let, let y'all let's do it. He had his uh his single Lil' Will though. We were uh, we were actually you know what I'm saying in, in progress of uh, recording Young Jeezy's album. So it was just like another one of the songs in line, like, you know what I'm saying? Gucci you man, you know, came to the studio and, and, and it all worked out good. You know what I'm saying? All the players were in position. You know at, at the same time. So I let Will hit a hook or whatever. Will sung it beautifully. So after he sung it or whatever, we laid it down. I left up with it. It turned to a big hit. When we first uh, started promoting it, the DJ said uh, it was too much singing. It was too R&B. But those was dudes. And then they realized when they started playing it, the chicks was the ones that were singing that they chain was hanging down to their dick. We ain't approaching no DJs, no PDs, nobody. They calling us. The song got its own legs. I could never get heard. I could never get my CD played with club, no matter if I paid the DJ or not. You know what I'm saying? It's like now. I got so I get so many favors and just my face cards just get me anywhere. I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's like they just roll the red carpet out for me everywhere I go now. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving it. Gucci man from the streets. He from the hood, he from the trap. So the hottest streets stamp that and say, yo, I love this cut. You could tell he's one of us. That's everything. <laughs>